Welcome to Whispering Pines Farms YouTube channel. My name is Jennifer Johnson and I raise Shetland sheep for their wool. This video is one of a whole series of videos I'm making of me skirting fleeces from the sheep in my flock. All the fleeces that I'm skirting in this playlist of videos are going to be sold in an auction that will be held on my website and it starts June 22nd. It's going to run for a week, close on June 29th, which is a Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. So the fleece I'm skirting today is from RU and her name is Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, um, she is a great cat mug at you. We sheared her this year. I rooted her her first year of life when she was a, it was a lamb fleece. And she just didn't really like it. She didn't like being on the stand. And she's a very friendly you, but she just struggled with it. And so from then on, I just decided that we were just going to shear her. So I'm skirting this fleece and what skirting is that it's the process where you remove all the parts of the fleece that are not usable by a hand spinner. You also would skirt a fleece if you were going to send it to the mill and you wanted to remove any of the wool that you don't want to have go into whatever it is you're having made, whether it be yarn or roving or comb top or, or whatever. So I'm skirting this with the purpose of making a fleece that's worthy of selling to a hand spinner. So it's probably I'm going to remove more than, let's say, a person that's going to be skirting a fleece for a mill. Um, and I'm going to remove a lot more than what I would do if I were skirting it for myself because I use a lot of the dirty wool because I can get it clean. I have a flicker from Magicraft I use and it works great to clean the wool, but a lot of people don't want to have to deal with that. So that's fine. Um, so Elizabeth is a four-year-old you. She has a spinning fineness of 21.9. And she's actually on my sheep for sale list. And the reason is, is that she just doesn't have as high of a fleece yield as some of the other sheep in our flock. It's, she's a great ewe and, um, you know, great quality, but the, the yield of the fleece is important to me. So, um, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to remove the neck wool. So we coat our sheep, um, and we coat the sheep so that they are nice and clean under the area that's under the coat. The neck wool is not under the coat and so it's not nice and clean and it gets kind of loaded up with VM, vegetable matter. So the neck wool gets skirted. In my comb top, I try to avoid including wool that's on the hairy side. And she does have a slightly hairy britch, so this wool will not be going into the mill the comb top because it's a little bit on the coarse side so that'll go into my compost bin or also known as my where I'll use for the wool for garden mulch. I used to use all of my skirtings for garden mulch but as they got higher quality and to a point where it was like you know really ashamed to put them in the garden I started to use it for a comb top, but this is all going into the mulch pile. Also any wool that has really heavily caked manure, these are called tags, where they're physically like hard. Don't put those in your mill order. You, you know, either you're going to get dirty wool back or the mill is going to charge you for extra washing or skirting, which is, you know, not a good use of your funds. All right, so now I'm going to start to remove the fiber that I would put into the mill, but I wouldn't offer to the hand spinner. So Elizabeth is a fairly tall U. She doesn't have a lot of VM in her fleece. She is a lighter colored cat mugget, really pretty. Really pretty color. So 
So what else can I tell you? So we're raising extra fine Shetlands. So Shetlands are um, a fairly common breed for hobby farms. They're nowhere near as prevalent as like a, a Merino. Thanks to New Zealand, there are, I can't remember, I had the statistic. I want to say millions of Merino sheep in the world, and there are tens of thousands of Shetlands in the world. So it's, you know, they're by no means a huge breed but they're pretty they're very popular in the u.s there are a lot of farms that have shallons because they're smaller all right so there is elizabeth's fleece skirted so what i was saying was we're actually selecting for shallons that have the really fine crimpy fleeces so they're our fleeces are not what you typically will see in north america when you look at a north american shetland because we're being more particular because I'm raising sheep for their finer wool. I'm just going to take that whole chunk. When in doubt, pull it off. <laughs> All right, Elizabeth, let's get a nice photo here. So I'm working in the new edition of the barn. We just built this a couple of years ago. It's been really nice for skirting. And the lambs were over here because I had them secluded from the balance of the flock for a while after they were born. But now they're out with the balance of the flock on the pasture. So we'll take a look at them here in a second. So this is the back of Elizabeth's fleece. So like I said, I did rue her. So she can be rude and she does have a pretty deliberate, easy to see break in her fleece. And here we got some second cuts. We don't want to include that in the fleece that goes to a hand spinner. So I can't see the sheep in the nursery, but I can by just looking out this window at the end of the addition. This is all my handling equipment here. Stupid starling. I can see them out here. This is the third day on this pasture, so they're going to be rotating out to the really deep one way back there. It's not as fun as when they were right next to me here, but if you want to see more of my lambs in the nursery, you can look at some of the earlier skirting videos in this playlist. So the quality, shearing quality is okay. I mean, that, there's nothing really glaring that bothers me. I am going to discount it though, because I feel like there's going to be a lot of pilling. So you're going to, if you, if you secure this fleece, you're going to need to probably comb or flick it to get some of the excess off of the base of the lock. I mean, that's not a bad thing because that's how I process all my fleeces. But you're going to get a little more waste than you would with a fleece that has a little better shearing quality. So I'm going to discount this to compensate you for that waste. Right, so now we're going to get a lock sample. So what, it's last day of May, I think, it's end of May, and it's a lot nicer out, more temperate, more seasonal. A couple videos I made earlier was so hot it was unbearable to even move, but I'm feeling pretty good here today. It's a Friday afternoon, so I'm going to pull my sample from Elizabeth. This is not a surprise. I figured it was going to be right around two inches, maybe a little bit longer. Beautiful crimp, really nice and fine. I'm going to put that on black paper because it is a pretty light color. 
I can hear the, I don't know if you can hear them, but I can hear the lambs bleeding for their mothers because they do tend to get, <laughs> get lost out there on the tall grass. But they've become very skilled at finding their moms. Getting themselves back on track. I have to take a photo of a parted fleece. So. so there's the lock. And let's part the fleece and get that photo. And then this will be ready to bag up and weigh. Great. So we're just going to fold this one in half. Now this is a sheared fleece, so it's not going to have two pieces. The rude, video, the rude fleeces that I have done videos on most recently come in two halves. Sheared ones are all one piece. Oh, there's somebody. Hello. Coming in for a little break. Maybe some water. Hi, baby. Aren't they so sweet? All right. Get the bag. They just pop in every so often. Hi, Lara. Oh, there's a fight in the background. That's great. You guys, come on. I'm trying to make a nice video here. 24.9 ounces. What Elizabeth's fleece ended up being. 24.9 is the post skirted weight. I'm going to sell it, but I'm going to discount it. And how do I discount it as I take off one half a cent per ounce. So usually the discount ends up being around $20, roughly. All right, Elizabeth's card goes down there. Hi there, Miss Aida. You come to say hello? You come to say hello? What are you doing? So she's my most friendly you, and of course, because they're on pasture, they don't know me, so she won't come over. A brat. <laughs> it's okay. All right, so that's Elizabeth's fleece. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I hope you can come back soon.